I'm Matt's way to a tech radar, and we're about to unbox the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. It's the Ultra version, which is better than the, the regular Note 20 that also got announced alongside of it. And uh, let's see what's inside and what it looks like. I'm gonna open this up, and there it is. Here is the Note 20 Ultra. It has 5G in it. And it has, of course, the S Pen. That is something that Samsung touts all the time. It's a stylus, that's Samsung's version of a stylus. It's like the Apple Pencil, but it's shrunk down and it fits into the Note 20 Ultra. So that's a little hideaway space for it. Let's open this up. Throw the top of the box over there and just take out this massive phone. It has a 6 0.9 inch display. That's not much bigger than the 6.7 inch display on the normal Note, but the Ultra version has a Quad HD resolution. So that's much better than the Full HD resolution. Uh, and it also has a 120 Hertz refresh rate. So you're gonna be able to boot up this phone and scroll through your Instagram feed a little more fluidly, play games uh, a little more fluidly. So that is a big deal. And once you start using that, it's hard to go back to 60 Hertz, which is on a lot of phones, including the iPhone. You can see the back of the phone has uh, three cameras on there. There's a three camera array. There's a telephoto, an ultra wide, and a regular wide camera. That's that's the main camera. Uh, that's 108 megapixels. So that's really cool. We're gonna put that aside for just a second. Take out a little info here for the carrier stuff. Uh, and then see what else is inside. So you have this little curtain that reveals, hey, we have a charger. So this is kind of interesting. It's a 25 watt charger in the box. Um, the Note 10 Plus and also all of the S20 phones that came out six months ago, they all had compatibility with a 45 watt charger, but that's been dialed back for some reason. None of the phones came with 45 watt chargers and probably no one used it. So maybe that's why Samsung got rid of that. But uh, I'm sure it'll be back eventually. We have phone manufacturers doing 100 watt chargers. So uh, that that's, you know, something I see Samsung updating maybe next year. Maybe they couldn't fit it inside. Uh, you have a USB-C to USB-C cable. That's really important for uh, making sure you're kind of getting rid of the uh, USB-A to micro USB cables that are probably lying around. Um, this one's just easier to plug in. So you can plug in this way and you can also plug in that way. So that's kind of a, a handy thing. So that comes in the box and we don't have much more in this box. There are no headphones. There are are no other little dongles and accessories that we usually get with this phone. It's kind of odd, but that seems to be the trend that smartphone manufacturers are, are going. Um, and that's, you know, reduces how many times do you get a new phone in, in the last like two or three years and just use your old earbuds or don't use your earbuds at all because you either have AirPods Pro or the Samsung Buds. Samsung just announced, coincidentally enough, uh, the Samsung Galaxy Buds Live. So that's a new set of buds in addition to the Galaxy Buds Plus that's just a different competitor to the Apple AirPods, specifically the Apple AirPods Pro. So uh, going through the phone, because this unboxing would be kind of short otherwise, we're gonna set this up, agree to all the terms, and we see the S Pen. So this version that I have has a mystic bronze color. There's also mystic white and mystic black, but we're lucky enough to have had the mystic bronze. It's this almost like a darker shade of the rose gold version that was offered previously. And if we take off the plastic, you can see that in full. Take off the sticker. And it's funny, they have a uh, kind of a plastic screen protector on there, but it has a little space in case you want to use that for the under display fingerprint sensor, the fingerprint under display as they technically call it. Um, so we're going to take that off as well. I'm going to go with the risk of having no case and no screen protector for now. And we're going to set this phone up. So we're going to take a second and 
start to initiate the fingerprint sensor. Works a lot like the other fingerprint sensors we've had before. Uh, this one does have somewhat of a face ID feature. It's called face unlock, but that has been known to be spoofed. So we're gonna go with this under screen fingerprint sensor technology. And that's kind of reminds us of the old touch ID days back when uh, Apple got that on their phones and it was a big hit. And there it is, the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra with that quad HD display or the ability to have it in full HD but also have 120 hertz refresh rate. That's really our preference because uh, it's hard to go back to 60 hertz, even with a quad HD resolution. We're willing to give up a couple pixels that we probably can't even see. But let's talk about this S Pen. So now it tucks into this left side, which is interesting, they switched it up on us. But the thing I really like, two years ago in the Samsung Galaxy S9, you had the ability to take photos remotely. It has a little bit of Bluetooth in here and you can take them remotely with this S Pen. It's kind of a cool feature, but I think this year's new feature wins hands down. We're gonna open up Samsung Notes. That's a, an app that has existed before, but it has a new feature that I really like. It's the ability to record audio notes using the phone and scribble things down and then go back to those notes and where you scribbled, if you touch, a certain particular spot, it'll start playing the notes back from that time you scribbled it down. So you have to imagine if you are a student and there's a big lecture or you know, you're know you in class or you're listening to a speaker, if you're a journalist, for example, and you're listening to a briefing and you jot something down, you don't have to jot everything down because it's captured through the audio, but it's kind of like an interactive timeline uh, that allows you to uh, go back and say, oh, I wanna go to this spot. So the timeline doesn't have any notes when you go back and do a regular audio recording, but this this does have something significant, uh, something where you can basically bookmark things. So that's kind of a, a neat new feature. In addition to the Note 20 Ultra, which we're gonna let it download all of our previous apps, we have another handy device. It's this thing, the Samsung Galaxy Watch 3. So that is the sequel to the Samsung Galaxy Watch, the original version. Don't worry, you haven't been sleeping for very long. Uh, the Samsung Galaxy Watch 2 does not exist. They had some non-Canon Galaxy watches in the mix with, uh, there were Samsung Galaxy Active watches, very fitness focused. This inherits a lot of those fitness features, but it has a lot more style to it in my opinion, and this neat rotating bezel. But let me show you something on the back here, which I, I really like. It's a handy sizing guide. So it tells you the minimum and the maximum. So I'm gonna put my hand right here and voila, I am a fit for this version of the Galaxy Watch. So I'm quickly gonna open up the Galaxy Watch. And here we go. There is the Galaxy Watch 3. It is, it is fairly big compared to something like an Apple Watch, but it's not that big. It, it seems bigger at first sight. But what we really like is that it has this round display. Uh, you can take it underwater. It has uh, five ATMs and also it's IP68. So you are allowed to go pretty deep with this. And it has a really nice leather band by default. So it has this stainless steel uh, 45 millimeter uh, watch face. There's also a version that has uh, 41 millimeters. Um, so it, they're both kind of a little bit smaller than the original Galaxy Watch, which was uh, 42 at, on the low end, on the small end, and 46. Um, but it seems less chunky at the same time. So what I really like, and what I said in the Tech Radar uh, hands-on review, is that what Samsung did was they gave us a more polished watch, more fitness features, um, but they kind of refine their watch without erasing a lot of the style. So it still has this rotating display that we like. So I'm gonna say sayonara to the Apple Watch 5, and I'm gonna attach this to see how it feels and looks. There we go. And instantly, it, it looks pretty good. I kind of 
already like it. I really liked the Galaxy Watch 1, the original one from 2018. And this one, uh, I can already tell it's even better. It's, it's a lot of what I wanted, which was a slightly smaller, more refined version of that original Galaxy Watch, but with that same rotating bezel. It doesn't have Android Wear or what Google now calls Wear OS on it, but we actually find the software on that that Samsung provides called Tizen to be actually a little bit better. Believe it or not, there's one more thing to unbox. It is rather large. It is the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7. I believe we have the Ultra version. Let's find out. So we're gonna clear all this stuff. It is packed tightly, but there it is. Yes, it is the Plus version. The Galaxy Tab S7 Plus is a 12.4 inch display and Samsung's really taking on the iPad Pro, which comes in 11 inch versions, which they do match. They have uh, the non-plus version is also 11 inches for Samsung. Um, but this one's 12.4, Apple's is 12.9. So uh, that may or may not be an advantage to you. Yes, bigger screens are great, but it's a little more compact. And uh, something I really like is the fact that is a Super AMOLED display with 120 Hertz on it. Um, so that's the only tablet in the world that you'll find uh, with that kind of spec. And it is slick. Now it doesn't come with the keyboard case, but it does come with this handy S Pen. And no, there's, there's no, place to stick the S Pen um, when you are kind of wanting to holster it. There's a charger in there. What else do we got? We got the regular USB-C to USB-A cable. So that's there. So that's how you're gonna charge it. Um, and then we have a SIM card ejector and some instructions that we'll, we'll never read. So that's, that's it for the unboxing portion, but let's uh, fire this up and then take out the case. So the case, the keyboard case is really nice um, because it has a spot to put the S Pen. So you just put it right behind here and it kind of rests between this keyboard case, the back of, of basically the um, device. So it rests between those two things. There we go. It's like Christmas. Ooh, there are two pieces to this. Some instructions, don't need them. And there it is. It, uh, it's hard here, but it definitely has a softer layer um, on the outside. So it comes in two pieces, which is, which is interesting and looking forward to testing that out. But uh, that way you can have the back case be protective even when you're not using the keyboard. That's, that's kind of a nice thing. But I'm, I'm super interested in seeing where we can tuck this because that's always my problem. I'm always losing this thing. So there you go. And then it has a kickstand which you can have in multiple places. So that's kind of a nice thing. That's everything for the unboxing. I know the phone unboxing was kind of short um, because there's a lack of stuff in the boxes these days, but that's okay. Check out techradar.com for a lot of the updates that we're gonna have. Uh, we're gonna be testing this phone out and giving you live updates as we have thoughts on it um, and leading up to our full review. It does launch on August 21st. So we will bring you your decision, the verdict that we have before you have to spend that money. So we'll tell you all about the Note and use this wonderful triple lens camera with a 108 megapixel sensor. So stay tuned, I'm Matt Swider. Reach me at, at Matt Swider on Twitter if you have any questions. Um, but uh, stay tuned to Tech Radar for more on the Note 20 Ultra and all of its friends.